Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dick Lewis. Um, I'm from the Musqueam First Nations. Anyone know where that is? It's over here at, uh, just by UBC. It's um, one of the first reserves at the uh, mouth of the river. And, uh, but there's reserves all the way up right to the top of the Fraser. And uh, all, all First Nations are, used to be dependent on uh, salmon. And that was one of the main re reasons they lived uh, beside the river, because they counted on the salmon for sustainability, to live on the salmon. And um, I'm 62 years old. And the reason I'm telling you that is because where you're sitting now, when I was your age, I used to go from Vancouver to Steveston on a tram that used to go down through Railway Avenue. And all this land here that you see, where, where you probably live, there was probably no houses there now. There, you know, there's, it was all farmland and fields when I was a little boy. And um, the only way we could get home was by tram. And that's, we used to go out to Steveston to get on my grandfather's boat and um, go fishing. Um, First Nations people, they, the first fish they caught was early in the spring, around now. And that fish has just about disappeared. Anybody know what that is? Sturgeon? Well, sturgeon is one, but there's another one too. It's only about this big. It's a ulican, ulican, and um, our people used to catch those and hang them up in the smokehouses and smoke them and put them away in a cool, dry place until they needed them. But now, when everyone found out how good they were, there was no no um, regulations on fishing them. So everyone out, everyone went out and fished millions of them. And um, just to tell you how much it was, when I was about 17, my uncle gave me a, loaned me his hooligan net. And I went out and I left it in the water too long. And you know how long was too long? I left it in for about 10 minutes. I should have only left it in for about anywhere from two to four minutes. Because I left it in for about 10 minutes, you know what happened to me? I couldn't lift that net up out of the water because there were so much hooligans in it. But now, we got a permit from DFO to go out and fish some hooligans for our elders this year. And we had to send them out five times, or maybe even six, to get 50 pounds of hooligans. They caught 48 to be exact, 48 pounds. So that's, that's how bad they're, they're listed on endangered species now. Along, you know, like the sturgeon, they're disappearing. The, the next fish that came was the Chinook salmon, after the illigans. And our people used to go fish those and can them. Along with that, and then after that, the sockeye came. But there was different seasons for, our, for salmon. Some seasons are for Chinook, some or some seasons are for sockeye, and then some, some are, are for pink salmon. So our people used all our, they used to have ways of preserving fish, and they'd put it away for the winter, to use it, in the, use it through the winter for ceremonies they had in the winter, and all kinds of other, you know, like people didn't live in houses on a reserve the way they do now. They lived in longhouses, and they had, they had um, special ways of storing fish. Most of it was drying. There was wind drying and um, canning and smoking the salmon. And um, farther up the river, they had different ways of preparing. They had uh, the, um, real warm winds up there in the valleys, and they, they wind dried their salmon. And they still do that today. But because the salmon has depleted, um, so much through all, which was demonstrated here by 
uh, yourself and our last speaker, um, we have to be really careful of what we, what we do now. First Nations people were, are, are really getting into the um, preservation of salmon because they've got all kinds of different groups going. Like, um, you know, for the Lower Fraser uh, Aboriginal uh, Coalition, They're, they work on different ways to um, work on building up salmon stocks. Um, all the reserves in the Fraser River this year, they're usually fishing Chinook salmon by now. They would have been about three, three or four weeks into their Chinook salmon fishing. But through agreement with all the bands on reserve, the First Nations people, they were requested by the interior bands if they could leave their nets out of the water because the Chinook salmon runs were so poor that some of them only had about eight to nine fish return in their streams. And that's uh, devastation, you know, of a salmon run. So through an agreement through all the bands, they had a meeting down in Vancouver here on our reserve, and they agreed to stay out of the water so that those runs could build up. And um, there's other organizations um, coming up now that are working together uh, with the bands and uh, and now we're involved in other things like um, patrolling for out in the Gulf out here for crabs, crab fishermen, doing crab hails, and um, we do um, we do other kinds of surveys to find out how much fish are getting into streams, and we're we're working. We're re really working together with um, biologists and other bands. Like you've seen on, the, on the, one of the slides, the Cultus Lake. The Cultus Lake sockeye was almost, uh, almost killed off because they were overfished. And um, so whenever the early, the early um, summer runs of sockeye come in, so the Cultus Lake sockeye are mixed in with those early summer runs, and um, in order to save the Cultus Lake sockeye, they have to shut the fishery down and get everybody off the water. And they've been doing that for quite a few years now. And I believe last year, they had a pretty good return. So all the steps and measures are, that are being made to, to um, bring the salmon back seem to be helping out but we have to all work together. Um, our creek through Musgrim is actually getting the salmon return. We're getting some coho and some uh, chum salmon, a few chum salmon return in the fall. And we haven't seen coho in there since I was a little boy. We used to sit there and listen to them swimming up the stream in the, in the fall. We could hear them splashing in the water. But now, you know, you have to go look for them. We had, I think we had 25 return last year in our stream. And um, we also had a kill in our creek, which is Musgrim Creek. And it was caused by someone emptying their swimming pool. And they emptied it and it went down, down in the, the drain into our creek. And um, it was on the news. They had uh, little, small little fry and fish laying all over the stream and floating down the stream. They were all, they were all dead, killed from the chlorine and stuff that was in the pool. So there's lots of things, you know, that, um, that you can do to help in building everything you learned here today. And, uh, you know, if there's something new, you can, you know, it's surprising how many parents learn from their children, you know? Because um, parents, you know, you come home from school and you say, you shouldn't do that. I said, why? Because that goes down into the stream and it kills the salmon. And we're trying to bring the salmon back. It's really surprising how many people 
how many parents learn from their children what they bring home from school? And um, when you do that, it shows that you're interested. You're interested in bringing salmon back. You're interested in learning. And um, it's, you know, we, you know, my grandfather used to tell us, no matter how old we are, we're still learning. We learn till as long as we live. We learn something new every day. And lots of times, things we learn are from our children. <laughs>